What is this? Hey everybody, welcome to Fanbase. Today we're doing a drag episode. Uh, my good man Daniel here is forcing it again to a skimpy drag outfit. What are you doing? Are they um, hats? Yeah, yeah, they are Daniel. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and I'm, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited about it. Hope your parents don't walk in on you watching this. This week in Fanbase, we dive into the world of drag. I hit the club visiting famous Pride of our Footscray. And later on in the show, we welcome Her Majesty Moxie Delight. Welcome everybody to a night you will not soon forget. I'm your favourite Teletubby, Twinky Winky. And I'm Phoenix Vol Knight. From Shakespearean times, drag has developed over the centuries to include 1900s vaudeville shows to theatres, performances and nightclubs. In case you guys don't know what a drag queen is, the run-of-the-mill drag queen is a man who dresses up as a woman and performs live on stage. But today we decided to do something a little bit out of the norm and meet two women who like to participate in drag culture. Let's get fabulous. Hi, my name is Maya Ogon and I'm an amateur drag makeup artist. Oh Jesus <laughs> Can this be your normal look? <laughs> Isn't she beautiful? I first got really into drag the first time I saw the creativity behind the makeup and costumes and I just fell in love with the creativity behind it. To me, drag is a way to express my creativity by becoming characters and honing my makeup skills. <laughs> move my mouth there. In the past few years, drag has really blown up in popular culture thanks to shows like RuPaul's Drag Race. You know you can just head into uni or work and people are talking about drag race and it just feels like it's a big part of culture right now. I think drag makeup differs from other beauty routines because it's a lot more involved and creative. Drag can take hours and hours and it's like turning your face into a completely different face. You're doing a painting on yourself almost. It's far more creative and freeing than conventional makeup. There is a little bit of controversy about women doing drag. Obviously, I'm all for it. It's called being a faux queen. RuPaul spoke out about trans women doing drag a year ago, but there was a lot of backlash to that. It's just a form of self-expression and although it started as a male thing, it doesn't necessarily mean it should stay that way. Overall, I find the drag that I post to Instagram is pretty accepted and I get a lot of support from my friends. Overall, I do it for me because it's something that I love to do. The drag community is a super camp and supportive and loud community. Even if you've never done drag before, you can lip sync for your drink for free down at Thursdays and just be a part of it. You can check out my Instagram at twinkywinkyho. Well, that was fantastic, wasn't it, Aaron? It sure was. You know, something else fantastic happened last week, Aaron. And what was that, Erica Lewis? Well, I went out and I hit the town. I saw dancers and singers and drag queens galore. Let's take a look. <laughs> Is there a hundred people in the room tonight? Oh, yeah! And 99 won't believe in you, but one will believe in the pride of Footscray. They're checking people for drugs in the club and you're walking in with cameras and lighting systems. I know! <laughs> well, um, normally I'm a little bit more dressed up. Um, but today I'm Matthew. Um, but when I go out in drag, my name's Kindred. And I've been doing that for about 18 years. And Madonna was having a live concert. And I said to my friend, maybe I'll just wear a dress and go. And I remember swaying as I heard her sing what it feels like to be a girl. The more you drink, the more talented we definitely are. Has anyone not seen A Star Is Born? I want to do a census. Has anyone not seen A Star Is Born? Yes. Get out. Get out. Get out. That's disgusting. That's homophobic. Everyone, we have a bigot in this house. Attacker. All right, is everyone in the mood for a little Archie Afternoon? I am always in the mood for some Archie Afternoon. Can we get a round of applause for Archie Afternoon? Hey, Archie, tell us something here at Fanbase um, that people wouldn't know about drag. Um, I guess uh, one of the biggest things that people might not know about drag is that it's not just cisgendered men dressing as women. Mm -hmm. uh, drag is for everyone and it's not 
just about looking like a woman either. It's about, uh, for a lot of people, it's about being a hyper female, about being told everything that women are supposed to be. So, you know, big hair, big boobs, tiny waist, big lashes. You know, meant to be this entire, pretty much like Dolly Parton, um, in its way, is, is what you know. Where it's almost like a piss take. We're making the fun out of what we're told women are supposed to be, and it's a great avenue. And it's not just cisgendered men that are doing it as well. There's, uh, you know, cisgendered females, and there's a huge trans community and non-binary community that do it too. And it's also not about just looking like a woman. It's there's drag kings. Uh, yeah. which is hyper-masculine, um, there's gender-bending, um, where there's elements of male and like masculinity and femininity to confuse people, um, and there's also, not all, you don't have to look pretty, you can look however you want to be, it's just an art form that you wear. Uh, so tonight uh, I decided to kind of uh, be a bit more feminine, I'm not traditionally a feminine performer. Really? Yeah. What are you usually? Um, usually I do really weird gender bendy kind of things, so I like people, I like to walk on stage and people go, what the fuck is going on right now? And I just say, you're welcome. Um, yeah, well, yeah. it's a great way to respond. Yeah, so I, I do a lot of fire performing, um, I do a lot of burlesque and boilesque. Um, I do a lot of drag king, a lot of glitter, but I also do just as a drag queen sometimes too. Um, so tonight, I it was actually an ode to one of my favourite performers um, from home, which is in Brisbane called Mandy Moops. And she does an act uh, to Young Frankenstein called Please Don't Touch Me. And it's one of my favourite things she's ever done. And I've, I've been missing her like crazy lately, yeah. so I wanted to do one of her songs tonight. And it's just so much fun. And, and I have natural breasts underneath this breastplate, so I wear a breastplate to, I guess, confuse people. Yeah. Um, and it was just a really fun camp time. You may remember me from Lady Gaga, you may be me from Linda Blad. Here we are in Freddie Mercury and Velvet. Can I get a round of applause for all the wonderful performance tonight, including the amazing Archie Arsenic. Very soon, but first, before we have Archie, we have the amazing performer who is her debut performance at the Pride of Earth. Can we get a round of applause for Moxie Delight? Tell us a little bit about your performance tonight. Well, just then I did like a, a hat reveal number, so like I had like three hats and then this mini hat underneath. Yeah, it's meant to be very camp. My first performance was September last year. So, like, I say that's just how long we've been doing it. But I've been doing costumes and makeup for a while. So yeah. yeah, well, you're really talented at the makeup. Like, I wish I knew how to do Thank that because it looks so good. So, how did you get into drag? Well, uh, my brother actually is a drag queen. Oh, uh, awesome. Yeah, called Aurora Arsenic. Um, and so, I'm Archie Arsenic, and they're the ones who got me into drag and into performing. They looked incredible and I wanted to do it too. I wanted to follow yeah. it, you know, in the footsteps of my, of my sibling. Yeah, and that's a lovely thing to yeah, do. Yeah, and so they've, they've taught me so much and then the community in Brisbane just absolutely took me in and loved what I did and then I started doing drag king and then the glitter and the gender bending. I'm pushing myself to be better. Better, yeah. Yeah, I think as soon as you get complacent, that's when you need to stop, take some time and reevaluate. I feel if I never produce anything else in my life, at least these acts in, exist in the world, I would love to travel overseas with it. And I always want to be pushing myself, pushing my body, pushing what I mentally think I can do. So to create more and more art. I think the important thing is I'm not transgender. I'm a drag performer, so I don't identify as wanting to be a girl. But it felt yeah. comfortable. Yeah, so what do you identify as? Because I know that it can be very confusing for a lot of people who um, are not familiar with uh, the different genders in society. Yeah, um, the interesting thing is, like, as myself right now, I identify as him or he or... Is him he of this? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but then when I'm in drag, I identify as they or them, mm -hmm. and I find that really interesting because obviously I'm the same person, but in different characters, um, yeah. how I identify is really important to me. I flew to the prime minister's house um, flew to in the prime drag, minister. and told the then prime minister Tony Abbott yes. that he had to be careful because homosexuals were no longer fighting for equality; it was Homo sapiens. Who wants a drink? I know I do, but I've run out of drink. I got no one to buy me a drink. Alright, 
very good for Teams of the Bar. And thank you very much for tonight. We've had such a fantastic night. It's been really beautiful. Oh, I am actually a shareholder at Pride of our Footscray Bar, which is where we are now. Oh, yeah, awesome. <laughs> which is a cooperative bar, so there's like 180 owners, trans, African, Vietnamese, women, men. Uh, almost whatever you can find in the community, they own it. A lot of people get afraid because they feel that Footscray is very uh, infiltrated by the African community, but they're beautiful and we're all just getting along in a, in a, in a way. Everyone's beautiful. Yeah. That, that's Bruna what I'm going to take beautiful. from this package. Everyone's beautiful. Yeah. If you just stick with that, you're in no trouble. Yes, Aaron, you're beautiful. Back to you in the studio. Uh, and you are beautiful. What a great night. I had heaps of fun. Aaron, you really shouldn't have missed I it. I am actually quite jealous, Erica, because that looked absolutely amazing. If you guys at home want to go check it out for yourself, the Pride of Our Footscray is open every weekend with drag-filled fun and other events. It's located in Footscray, the good old western suburbs of Melbourne. Now, in that clip, you may have noticed our next guest with their fun, fabulous, queen-like ways. We're very lucky to have him in the studio with us today. Please welcome the fabulous Moxie Delight. Moxie, welcome. Studio. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. So, first question right out of the gate. Yes. How long have you been doing drag for? Well, <laughs> I did makeup uh, from when I was 16, but I've been doing drag since last year, September. Oh, like yes. performing, yeah. And what inspired you to get into drag? Well, like, uh, watching Drag Race at first, but then um, seeing queens in real life, and then I've been following, like, the queens from Melbourne for ages now, so I just had to get out there and just start... Doing now, drag is a very deep kind of rabbit hole of lots of different types of subcultures. Obviously, we've got the the, the horror culture, and we've got like the you know the super fabulous one, which I'm going with today. <laughs> um, so, how do friends and family kind of react to the kind of deep kind of culture around drag? Oh, um, well, like my parents are still kind of coming around to it. Mm. I did invite my dad and my dad's fiance to a performance. Mm -hmm the other day and they really loved it and oh, they were like, awesome. oh, we get, good. Good <laughs> oh we get it now. That's good. Yeah, we get it. We get why you're doing it, blah, blah, blah. Mm, mm, but mm. Um, I guess mum's still trying to be coming around to it, but <laughs> it's not like she stops me or like she sees yeah. I'm happy. She just wants me to be safe, I guess. Yeah. Mm, that, mm. No, that's the best thing that you can yeah. get. Yeah. And being in the Melbourne scene, what has the drag scene in Melbourne been like for you? Well, like, um, I definitely realised that it's kind of like, um, it's very connected. So like, um, I don't know, um, by the time you're going out like a few weeks in a row, like you just know everyone, you'll be like, That's hi girl, how you going? Hi girl. <laughs> just like, just anyone you see, you're like, oh, I recognize them. Hi, how you going? Like it's very friendly and open. That's um, good. I kind of got that vibe when I did go down to the Pride of Footscray. Yeah. Um, everyone was just so welcoming, even not like, not just the performance, the performers, but the people who were actually within that bar were just really kind-hearted and I've never actually experienced something like that before when I'm out and about. Yeah, it's yeah. it's definitely a unique experience because it's like, um, I don't know, because like I went from like high school, turn 18 and then start doing drag. So it's like, this is like, you go from like everyone's kind of clicky and very like separated, I guess, into like this environment where everyone's like, they're there to have a good time, yeah. they're there to like support everyone it's really cool yeah are there nights that are just centered around one subgenre or does it like flow throughout all of them how does that yeah, all... like i think i think that there's um the way i see it is like there's like a there's some kind of genre that appeals to everyone mm, i guess mm. which is like very like um like you know men as women mm. like they're wearing yes. like the fabulous wigs and like the makeup and they're like death dropping all over the floor and everything <laughs> and like can um, you death drop um <laughs> i'll hurt myself oh. no 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 i'm not asking you to do it but can you do it because i've seen it done and it looks so dangerous oh. um no i've tried but i'm like uh. <laughs> yeah. in case you don't, guys don't know what a death drop is it's when people jump and then literally land is it on the oh, back gosh. of their legs and then stand back up yeah like one leg that bent and one of them it's insane if you guys watch rupaul's yes. drag race yeah um yes. it's yeah it's i don't know how people do it yeah. it's absolutely crazy well, thank you all for tuning in at home and a big thank you to Moxie for joining us in the studio today. Woo! My name is Aaron Drew. And my name's Erica Lewis. Make sure you check in next week for our last ever episode where we talk comic books. It's going to be fierce. Sure will be. We'll see you next week.